Well, there's a, a huge range of kidney diseases, a huge variety that can actually happen, um, and to name them all will be, will be quite difficult. The commonest type of kidney disease are the kidney diseases that people are born with, so congenital type diseases, where they're born with impairment of their kidneys from early life, but we also treat a variety of kidney diseases that are acquired through infancy and childhood as well. Chronic kidney disease is treated with a mixture of dietary restrictions, controls and medications. And finally when the kidneys actually fail, uh, we treat them with a period of dialysis or transplantation. We occasionally transplant or we try to transplant people before they even hit the requirement for dialysis, but sometimes children require a period of dialysis to make them better and be in better condition for kidney transplantation. Nutritional uh, control is extremely important in treating kidney disease, particularly advanced kidney disease and the type of kidney disease requiring some kind of kidney replacement therapy such as dialysis. Um, and that takes many different forms. Common to most of our children on dialysis is the issue of fluid restriction. Most of our children don't produce enough urine um, safely to rid the body of excess water. So we have to restrict the amount of fluid they can have. So you can imagine restricting fluid to a thirsty child is an extremely difficult thing to do both as a doctor, a medical professional and nurse, but particularly for the parents at home as well to deny their children the drinks when they're thirsty as well. But this forms a really important part of what we do. The prime things we control in the diet are the intake of phosphate, the intake of potassium and the right intake of salt, sodium and protein and that can either be too much so it's in a way toxic to the body but it has to be enough to maintain adequate growth and nutrition and I'm afraid the types of foods that contain phosphate, potassium, protein and sodium are the best types of food that children would like to eat. Each child's dietary plan is based on the individual circumstances of that child and that takes into account their underlying kidney condition and what we can expect from that and how it behaves. That takes into account their nutritional state when going on to dialysis and it takes into account their blood results as well. And we work very closely with the renal dietitians, who are an extremely specialised form of, of dietitian, um, to work with the family to do that. And they will provide an individualised, tailor-made dietary plan for each patient. And that can, be wild, that can be wildly different between patients as well, so that's even difficult for the patients who discuss it amongst themselves in the dialysis unit. They can find that their dietary plan is completely different to the person sat next to them. So that can be difficult for sharing ideas and sharing the burden as well sometimes. People cope with it in completely different ways. We have some patients who don't find it necessarily that difficult and have amazing dietary control, blood pressure control and blood results on dialysis. And we have families who find that a lot more challenging. And that can be the individual themselves, the patient themselves, or it can be the parents as well sometimes. Um, and that requires an almost daily and weekly revisitation of the diet plan to reinforce the ideas with the parents and the child as well and what can be difficult as well is not all the issues about the diet make an obvious difference to the patient there and then and some of the dietary changes we make are really about safeguarding the child's health in the future months and years to come even when they're off dialysis and have been successfully transplanted as well and getting parents and patients to think 10 and 20 years in the future can be really quite difficult as well. We're very honest, first of all, and we ask our parents to work with us closely. We expect them to be able, in a way, to follow the plans that we've set out, but we also realise how difficult it is, and there are going to be slip-ups along the way, there are going to be roadblocks, there are going to be burdens, and we have to then often sit down and go back to square one and start again. And they can expect from us you know, ongoing input uh, to be available for advice any time, day and night as well. Um, but I would expect them at the outset to know that it's going to be difficult, it can be challenging, but together with the dietitians, the doctors and the nursing staff and continue revisiting what we need to make the child better, we hopefully can kind of navigate these problems. I think one of the main issues can be if people aren't particularly creative with, with cooking at home and other issues like that, 
knowing what to be able to give someone if they've got a restriction. Instead of saying what you can't have, it would be so much more helpful if as a profession and as a discipline we can say what you can have and this is what you can eat and here are some great ideas.